There, Honorable Governors, look at the time. Good evening. I wish to welcome you to this event on the launch of our flagship publication, the African Economic Outlook for 2022. The COVID-19 pandemic caused so much havoc in the world and so much pain. Our world lost so many precious lives to a virus we could not see. Mm -hmm. The pandemic also caused the worst global economic recession in the world since World War II. The real GDP growth rate in Africa declined by minus 1.6% by 2020 due to the economic downturns as tourism dipped and dried up as commodity prices tumbled, this economic slump was the worst in Africa for decades. Africa lost 29 million jobs, and 30 million people fell into extreme poverty. Debt levels increased as debt-to-GDP ratio in Africa breached the north of 70%. The recovery for Africa will be very costly. Africa will need at least $432 billion to address the effects of COVID-19 on its economies and on the lives of its people, resources that it does not have. The measures being taken by the global community, or taken already by the global community, especially the Debt Service Suspension Initiative, the DSSI, the G20 Common Framework on Debt Treatment, and of course the issuance of the $650 billion in special drawing rights by the International Monetary Fund have all helped. For Africa, the African Development Bank launched a crisis response facility of up to 10 billion US dollars. The bank also launched a $3 billion fight COVID-19 social bond on the global capital market, which at the time that it was launched was the largest social bond ever in world history. The accumulation of these collective efforts and those of other financial institutions such as the World Bank, the IMF, and other international financial institutions, of course, as well as bilateral financiers, have helped a great deal. The real GDP growth of Africa recovered to 6.9% in 2021, as trade and tourism resumed, commodity prices increased, and due to the increased consumption and investment. This is good news, in fact, great news. Although the growth now seems to have been tempered again, due to the heightened global uncertainties because of Russia's war in Ukraine. It has rocked global commodity and financial markets yet again. The African Economic Outlook also focuses on the issue of climate change and the just energy transition, which form the theme of the annual meetings of the African Development Bank. The report shows that Africa needs a lot more financing to tackle climate change, but it came at it from a different perspective, or let me say, a new perspective. The global community has for many years been clamoring, and more recently at the COP26 in Glasgow, for developed countries to pay up on the $100 billion promise for developing countries on climate finance. The African Economic Outlook takes a very innovative modeling approach based on what I can call denied gains in Africa in terms of economic gain, growth, due to developed economies' carbon-intensive growth trajectories over decades, and the wealth creation pathways, and goes on to show that indeed Africa has an allocative carbon credit of up to $4.8 trillion by 2050. That will mean 
that Africa is owed $173 billion annually between this year and 2050. It's a lot higher than the $18 billion that Africa got in terms of climate finance. You see the difference. It's a far cry from the finance in Africa is getting today. You will find the report to be very illuminating with excellent analytical and modeling works used to make a very clear case for what the authors call carbon headroom for African economies to be able to grow. A very interesting and very novel concept. Let me thank you, Professor Kevin Urama, the acting chief economist and vice president of the bank, your directors and staff and partners for an excellent job on producing this highly informative African economic outlook for 2020. Enjoy the presentation. Thank you very much.